Dear representatives of the National Assembly of Turkey, dear president of Istanbul Chamber of Commerce, dear president of the Foundation for Education and Development in Sarajevo, Mr. Hasan Topolu, dear rector, dear professors, students, distinguished guests, and dear friends. We are proud to welcome you to the conference the Review of the World Economy at the International University of Sarajevo. Our distinguished guest and speaker today is Dr. Murat Yalçintaş, President of the Istanbul Chamber of Commerce, Vice President of the Turkish Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, President of the Association of the Mediterranean Chambers of the Commerce and Industry. Mr. Yalçintaş, welcome to International University of Sarajevo. You will kindly ask Professor Dr. Özel Çınar, Rector of our University, to give us a welcome speech. Dear member of Grand Assembly of uh, Turkish Parliament, and dear Chairman of Chamber of Commerce of Istanbul, and dear uh, President of our Foundations, and dear also Vice Chairman of uh, Istanbul, uh, Chamber of Commerce of Istanbul and dear distinguished guests and uh, dear students. I would like to uh, welcome you. It's my great pleasure to extend this uh, ex extensive welcome to you all. And uh, I would like to excuse from you because I have uh, this speech in business forum, uh, in the Sarajevo business forum and I would like to leave earlier and again I would like to welcome and Dobrodošnji. Thank you very much. Thanks to our rector. Now I'd like to leave the stage to the Member of Parliament of Istanbul from Turkey, Nureti Nevati, please. Değerli Vakıf Başkanım, değerli rektörüm, çok değerli mütevelli heyeti, değerli başkanım ve değerli öğrenciler, burada, bu üniversitede burada bulunmaktan dolayı büyük bir mutluluk duyduğumu ifade etmek istiyorum. So much glad to be here in this university, International Sarajevo. Burada gördüğüm kadarıyla hem Türkiye'den gelen arkadaşlarımız, kardeşlerimiz e, Türkçe'yi dinlemekten dolayı büyük bir mutluluk duyuyorlar. As far as I see here, Turkish friends would love to listen to Turkish speaker right now. Ama bir öğrenci olarak gününüzü İngilizce olarak geçirmenizi, İngilizce düşünmenizi sanık veririm. As a student, I would suggest you to spend your daily life in English. Ben özellikle bir selamı getirmek üzere kürsüye çıktım. Sayın Rektörümüze teşekkür ediyorum. I especially came to the stage to give a forward uh, greetings. İş, for Rektör. İş forumunda davetli olarak Sayın İTO Başkanı ve heyetinin davetlisi olarak geldim. I came as a president of İTO. Ve gelmeden önce Sayın Genel Başkanımızdan, Sayın Başbakanımızdan izin aldım. And before coming, I got allowance from our uh, Prime Minister. Bir şartla dedi. And he said, oh, you know, under one condition. Açılışını yaptığım üniversitede öğrencilere çok sevgilerimi ve muhabbetlerimi mutlak şekilde ileteceksin. That all, under only one condition that you will forward my loves to the students that, that the university you go. Ben de bu göstermiş olduğunuz yürekten samimi sevgilisini, sevginizi mutlak surette kendilerine ileteceğim. And I will forward how welcoming you are to him and how lovely you are. Çalışmalarınızda başarılar. Allah yar ve yardımcınız olsun. Thanks to MP of Turk of Istanbul from Turkey. Now Nietzsche said, the world is in the hands of the ones who create new values. If there's a problem, there's a solution too. 
I'd like to invite Dr. Murat Yalçantash to give us his speech. Doctor, please. Assalamu alaikum. I am very happy to be here with you today. And I want to thank you. I want to thank, of course, at the beginning to the rector and to the administration for inviting me here to talk to you. And uh, I would like to thank to you also, because you came here to listen to me. You really made me very happy. Thank you very much. Now, uh, at the beginning, uh, the gentleman who made the introduction said that, by the way, when I speak like that English, you all understand, right? Yes. Okay. He said that uh, I will be speaking about world economy, which I'm not. <laughs> because uh, I think that that will be a rather boring subject. Uh, instead, uh, I want to talk to you a bit about, in general, the life and uh, I have some feelings that I want to share with you. Usually, when I go to the university in Turkey, I go to many universities to make speeches. I make a general speak, and at the end, I give, let's say, half an hour for questions and answers, or if there is anything you want to say. At that time, if you have any questions about economy, I am ready to answer. But before that, I want to tell you some <coughs> other things which I think more important. Now first, <laughs> since I'm in this university and since I'm in Sarajevo, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, I would like to pay a tribute to Aliye Izetbegovic. As you know, in Turkey, we call him Vice King. Because of his great struggle for independence, we are here now, and because of his great struggle for independence that you are sitting here and I am talking to you here. That's what I want to tell to you. And as I said, since 2005, because I became president of the Istanbul Chamber of Commerce in 2005, every year I'm coming to Sarajevo, every single year. And when I come here, I always feel at home. Because what I see here between Istanbul and Sarajevo, there is a common culture, there is a common heritage. When I first come here, I thought that the only difference was in language. But then Shekip Bey, who is a deputy chairman in Istanbul Chamber of Commerce, he is from Sarajevo also, he showed me the name of the streets in Başçarşı, and I realized that even the names was similar. So this is really home for us. I mean, when I say us, I mean the Istanbulite, the people who come from Istanbul. And believe me, I'm telling this for the Bosnak students. Bosna, Bosna Herzegovina and Sarajevo has got a different place in the heart of all the Turks. And this is not something coming from yesterday. This is something coming from the five centuries back. And when I say Sarajevo, I always remember two films. I don't know whether you watch them or not. The first one was Hakan Albayrak's documentary. His name was My Dear Sarajevo. And the other one, it was another film which has been shown in TRT1, which is Purple Violets. I don't know, but uh, Hassan Bey, if you have them, you have to show them here, because they are extremely, extremely nice films and they really show the heart of Sarajevo. And of course, for us, for the Istanbulites, Sarajevo and Bosnia-Herzegovina has got another importance. For all the Ottoman history, this place defended the northwest frontier of the Ottomans. We always said that the key of Istanbul is in Sarajevo. And for many, many years, the Ottoman Empire has been ruled 
by the Grand Vizirs, which came from this area. I'm sure you know Grand Vizir Sultan Mehmet Pasha. He was from here. There is Hasek Zade Ahmed Pasha, Damat Berek Mehmet Pasha. All of them, they were Grand Vizirs, which ruled the Ottoman. And as you know, there is the Sultan, but the real ruler is the Vizir. And most of them has come from here. And I want to say a couple of words for you, because I believe that studying in this university is quite important, because I see you as the founding stones of the future of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I am very sincere when I say it, because there are two types of students here. Some of you are from <laughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina, and some of you, you came from different countries, including Turkey. For the ones that you come from here, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I believe that you will do quite important things for your country. And for the ones who came from other countries, such as Turkey, I believe that you will be a link between your country and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And one last thing about Sarajevo I want to say. When I see this city, I thought that this city was the Jerusalem of the Balkans. This is what I felt. I have visited Jerusalem before. Maybe you have visited also, some of you have visited. And then when I came here, I saw that like in Jerusalem, in this city, for the years and years, in the past also, in the history, there were people living from different religion, from different language, from different race, and from different color. Believe me, this is very important. Because in the world, there are very few cities where people from different beliefs can live together. This is a unique thing. And then you live in a city which have this uniqueness. This gives you a broader perspective. You understand that in the world there are other people who don't think like you. You understand that in the world there are other people who believe differently from you. But you learn that you are able to live with them side by side. This is a very important advantage. Because in the world, if there are so many wars, if people are killing each other, if people don't like each other, believe me, the only reason is that the people are afraid of the others who are not like them. This is a very important thing. Only the moment you start to know people who are not like you, and then you start to respect them, and then you can create the true peace. This is why people in Sarajevo has got a unique character. This is what I wanted to share with you. And I want to quote Aliyah Isetvegovic here once again, because I know that this land has suffered a lot. And I know that we should never forget the pain, but we should not seek revenge for the pain. I saw the same thing in Jerusalem also. And I saw the same thing here. We should never forget the pain, never. But we should never seek the revenge also. Because as Aliya said, nobody should seek revenge. Only justice should be sought. Revenge opens the door to immense evils. Do not forget the past, but do not live in it. I wanted to convey this message particularly because, as you know, today there is a court in Del Haag and some Serbian killer, I want to say, is being punished there. Inshallah, he's going to be punished very severely. We should never forget the pain, but never seek the rage. Now, I want to tell a couple of things for you for your future. 
And then I will also leave the floor for you because I believe that what you are going to say or what you are going to ask may open the doors for a more fruitful speech. I don't just want to speak here and make you listen. When I look to my past and when I look to my youth and when I look to my <laughs> university years, I realize that what I received in the university years has given me a lot of things for what I did today. This is the same thing for you also. When you are in the university, you don't realize, you don't understand. But when those years passes, and when you look back, then you understand the value of the things you received in the university. And I always tell to myself, if when I was in the university, I had the same mind, I had the same perception, I will pay attention to five things. This is what I say. And um, I will try to share these five aspects with you. And I believe that maybe for some of you, it will be quite useful for your future. <coughs> My first principle is very simple. Have an ideal. Have a goal. Put a target in your life. It can be a personal target, it can be a social target, it can be something else. It may change, it doesn't matter. But you should have a target, you should have an idea. This is very important. Like that, we have, in Turkish we have a saying. We say that, hayatta bir derdin olsun. You can translate it like, have a problem to strive for, so that it illuminates your way. You always try to reach it. <laughs> there is a very good saying of Mevlana Celaleddin Rumi. He says that problems always show people the way. Because if you don't have a problem, if you don't have something to reach, then you don't have a goal in life. You don't strive. But in order to be successful, you have to strive. You have to work for something. That's why the first principle is have an ideal, have a goal, have a target. And this is those years that you decide about your target. The second one is very important also. So you have a target. What you will do? You have to believe yourself. This is very important. You should believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, no one will believe to you. When you say something, if you believe to what you say, other people will believe to you. If you don't believe in what you are saying, no one will believe to you. In Turkish, we have a very good anecdote. We say that once upon a time in a small village, there was a young kid and this young kid was very, uh, let's say, yaramas. How we translate it? Spoiled. Naughty. Okay. My English is that much. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So the mother takes the child from his hand, and he goes to the wise man of the village, to the Hoja family. He says that. This child is very aramas, he is very spoiled. What shall I do? The wise man of the village looked at the child and he said, Woman, go away, come back after 40 days. The woman says, Okay. He takes the child, he goes away, and he comes back after 40 days to the wise man. He said, Okay, I came back. And then the wise man looked at the child and he says, This is a story. Don't eat honey, my son. And then he sends him away. And then the woman says, Oh, wise man, you only said don't eat honey. Why you send me away and you told me to come back after 40 days? You could have said it the first time when I came. The wise man said, No. In the morning, in the breakfast, I had eaten honey. If I had said to the guy, don't eat honey, it would have no effect because I had eaten myself. For 40 days, I did not eat any honey. 
And now when I tell him, don't eat honey, he's not going to eat any. Okay? So this is a very simple example showing us that you have to believe in yourself. And when you say something or when you do something, if you want to be an example, at first you have to be an example yourself. Only that way it can work. And don't forget, if someone cannot save himself, no one else can save him. That's why you have to believe in yourself. Of course, you have to believe in God also, in Allah Ta'ala. Then you have to do your best. But everything starts in you. This is the second principle. The third principle is what I am a bit sad, because I couldn't keep this principle. The third principle is don't abandon your dreams. Don't leave your dreams. When I was young, when I was in university, I had many dreams. And they were good dreams. Then the university has started. And the life, has, the university has finished. And the life has started. And when I started to life, I saw that some of the realities of the life did not fit into my dreams. And in front of me, there were always two paths. <coughs> I had to make decisions. This is always the same. In the life, you always have to make decisions. And always, when I had to make a decision, there was two paths. One was the easy one, an easy path, easy to do. But the other one was difficult. When I choose, in general, the easy path, the easy way, I have to abandon my dreams. Because if you want to read something, if you want to do different things, if you want to be successful, you have to choose the difficult path. Because everyone goes from the easy way. If you want to be one step ahead, you have to go from the difficult ones, and you have to follow your dreams. You should not abandon your dreams. Most of the time, I abandoned mine. But when I look back today, I always say, ah, I should not have done it. But it's too late now. That's why I am telling you, don't abandon your dreams. When you make the choice, even if the path is difficult, choose the difficult one. Because at the end of the day, when you look back, back, you will be proud of yourself. You will be proud of the path you chose. And it will bring you to the success, earlier or later. The dreams, your dreams, are your life. When you lose your dreams, you lose your life. And the strength of your dreams is more important than the knowledge. Believe me. When you want to read something, of course the knowledge is important. But your driving force will be your dreams, not your knowledge. Then comes the fourth one. The fourth one, for me, is the essence of most of the things in life. And you can understand me much better. Those gentlemen who are in, sitting in the first row may not understand because when the age goes by, it becomes <laughs> difficult to understand <laughs> what I'm going to tell now. The essence of everything in life is love. What drives you is your heart and not your mind. When you do something, love it. Do your job with a lot of love, with a lot of affection, with a lot of passion. Whatever you do in life, don't do it without love. When you are with someone, love him or love her. If there are people whom you don't love, don't be with them. You should never forget it. That keeps your heart clean, believe me. Only this love 
and only this enthusiasm will bring you success. Because if you do your job, if you live your life without love, your life will be nothing. And you will not enjoy it. And whatever you do will not bring barakah. Because barakah comes only with love. And of course, the love starts with the love of Allah Ta'ala. And from the reflection of this love of Allah Ta'ala, you start to love the universe, you start to love the humans, you start to love the trees, you start to love everything. That's why the first step is to love your creator, and then the reflection of this love reflects to every single step that you take in your life. If you really love Allah Ta'ala, and if you really love everything that he created, you cannot harm anyone. You cannot harm yourself. And in whatever thing you do, there will be barakah. Never forget it. I will read you a small sentence from a writer that I like a lot. This is Halil Gibran. I don't know whether you read it or not. And Halil Gibran has got a very nice booklet, small booklet, which is called The Prophet. It has been translated into Turkish as Ermish. I strongly recommend you to find it and to read it. In this, he, there are chapters on many things. And in one chapter, which is entitled Work, he is talking about the relation between work and love. There I will read it to you. He says, you should weave the clothes, if you weave a cloth, you should weave the cloth as if your lover is going to wear it. Weave it with the threads pulled from your heart. Construct the building as if your lover is going to live there. And construct it with the speed of your soul. If you don't plant seeds with compassion, you cannot harvest the crop with pleasure. Believe in this with all my heart. I say to you that if you don't work with open arms, if you don't work with love, if you don't love your work, if you work with sadness, you should quit your job. This is very, very important. Do something that you love. And love what you are doing. And then you will have a decent life. Last. Last is about the success. And I want to tell you about two things about the success. Because all of us, we want to be successful in life. But we should not forget two important parameters about the success. The first parameter is you cannot obtain the success without hard work, and you cannot obtain the success without failure. There is no such thing. You will fail once, you will fail twice, you will fail three times. At the fourth, at the fifth, you will get the success. There is no success without failure. Second, there is no success without hard work. Now, there are many young people, let's say that they want to become rich. They want to become rich like that. There is no such thing. This is haram. There are people who want to learn something, let's say, who want to pass a lesson, who want to learn something, just like that, from morning to evening. No, there is no such thing like that. If you want to get something, you really have to work hard for it. And before getting something, you have to know that you are going to fail. The most important thing is that you should not be discouraged from failing. There is very nice annotation which Edison has said. Edison said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% yani başarı %1 deha, %99'da terlemedir. 
And of course, you will have many obstacles in your life. Life is difficult. Life is that easy. There are many difficulties in life. There are many times that you feel sad. There are many times that you feel discouraged. There are many times that you just don't want to continue. You just want to sit. You should not be discouraged. And you should never forget that the darkest hour is just before the dawn. When everything seems so bad, inshallah, the next hour will be much better. In Turkish, we say, kul sıkışmayınca hızı yetişmezmiş. <laughs> but my English is not enough to translate it in Turkish. <laughs> so later, the Turks may tell it to their Boşnak friends. Now, this is what I want to share with you. As you listened, I did not say anything about the economy. Later, if you ask, I may say it, because I am always talking about the economy in Turkey. And I don't like it anymore, to be honest. <laughs> but so I, when, when I come to a different environment, I want to talk about different things, which makes me happy also. And I hope that made you happy also. Last thing, with your permission, again, from Aliya Izzet Begovic, because I like him a lot, I respect him a lot. I will tell you a small event from the life of Aliya that illuminates my path, and inshallah it will illuminate your path also. So during the war, one day, Aliya was walking during the city, and then the Serbs started shelling the city. Then there was a woman next to Aliya, and then when the shelling has started, when the bombing has started, of course the poor woman, he just lied down, he threw herself down, and he shouted to Aliya. He said, President, President, they started to shell again. Please get down, you are going to be hurt. Aliya was very much known for his courage. He said, this is a long and deliberate walk. And then he continued to walk. This is very, very important. He showed courage. He showed leadership. And he said to us that not only at that moment, but all of our life is a long and deliberate walk. Whatever happens, we have to continue to walk in the right direction. So that was what I wanted to share with you this morning. From now on for 20 or 30 minutes, the floor is yours. You may say your opinion. You may ask questions about whatever you want, about whatever subject it pleases you. But uh, let me tell you again that I want to thank you a lot. I want to thank you a lot for coming here, for listening. And I hope that I did not waste your time. And I hope that you got maybe some little things from what I shared with you. Thank you very much. Ask questions. OK, let's start from there. And then we'll go that way. My name is Mohamed Tulch and I'm in fourth grade of First Bosnian Gymnasium and I have one question. What are the opportunities and future of Bosnian students willing to enroll in Turkish universities? Um, ask once again, but slowly. Okay. I'm sorry. What are the opportunities and future for Bosnian students willing to enroll in universities in Turkey? Okay, you mean for the MBA and PhD or for just for after the undergrad the undergraduate program? Undergraduate. Okay. Now, in Turkey, there's a very good, you may see, it's okay. Thank you. I thank you a lot. Now, in Istanbul and in Turkey in general, there are many universities. Let me tell you a bit about the system. In Turkey, when you want to enroll to a university for the undergraduate, you have to take an exam. The exam is for everyone in Turkey, and you have to get a certain mark in order to be enrolled in this university. But of course, for students who are coming from abroad, there is a certain quota 
This is why it is much easier for students from coming abroad to be enrolled in a university in Turkey. There are two kinds of universities. The first kind is the government universities, which are almost free of charge. Secondly, like this one, Vakf universities. But in these Vakf universities, you have to pay. Since the government universities are free of charge, you have to get higher marks in order to get those universities. With lower marks, you can be accepted to Vakf universities. But the education quality in the Vakf universities are as good as the, uh, let's say, government universities. Okay? This is the first thing. For MA or MBA or MSCA, for graduate studies, it is easier to go. You just go to the university you want. You have to go through an exam. For the PhD, this is also the same thing. You just go to the university you want to make your PhD. You go through an exam, and then they take you or they refuse you. I recommend for the Bosnian youth who want to, who want to go to study in Turkey for the universities, because it really brings a lot of opportunity. The reason being is that me, as a business person, as the leader of the Turkish Istanbul business community, I see that there is a lot of opportunity, not only in Bosnia, but in the whole Balkans. Because, as you know now, the Croatia is going to be a member of the European Union, and then most probably Bosnia also will be a part of it. And there is a lot of business opportunities in Bosnia. But in order to fulfill those business opportunities, you are going to need a lot of foreign investment. Because in Bosnia, for this fast development, in every country it is the same thing, there is not enough local financing, there is not enough local manpower. You need foreigners to come. The same thing is valid for Turkey also. In Turkey also, we need a lot of foreign investment to develop Turkey. The same thing is valid for Bosnia also. And believe me, in the coming 10 or to 15 years, there will be many, many, many business opportunities in this country. There will be many, many foreign companies who will come to work in this country. Most of them will be Turkish, because of the reasons that I told you. But for a Turkish company to come here or to work, or for a Bosnian company, for a Balkan company to come to work with Turkey, you need people in between. This is very important. You need people who can make the link. There should be people who speaks a bit of Turkish, a bit of Bosnia, who knows Turkey, who knows Bosnia. There will be the link people, and those kind of people will be very much in demand. That's why people like you who studies in universities like that, or people who go to Turkey to study in Turkey, and then to work there in Turkey, or to come back to work here in Bosnia, will have a lot of opportunities. But for this, I recommend you to have three qualities. These three qualities is very important. The first quality, know the language very well. Your language should not be a kitchen language. What I mean, you should not speak kitchen Turkish, or kitchen English, or teaching Bosniak. There should be good language. You should be able to write. You should be able to communicate easily. This is the first important thing. Today, when there is someone to come to me, and when he or she asks a job from me, the first question I ask is, do you speak any language? If he says yes, my second question is, how good? Because everyone speaks language. Everyone. But People who know language well, well, they are very rare. The moment you speak your language good, you are one step or two step ahead, you guarantee your place in the company. Okay? Learn your language well. This is the first thing. Second thing, very important, I did not do, I am very sad, you have to do it. Have a good social network. Me, I missed it. 
I studied in Belgium for three years, but I did not make any social network, which I am very, very sad now. If I had made this network at that time, today I would have friends all over the world, and when I needed something, I would reach it with one telephone. Here now you are very lucky. You have friends from different places from the world. Make good friendship, keep contact, don't lose the contact. This is very important. Don't lose the contact. To keep contact with people, there is one thing that I do. I recommend you do it. I always try to call people whom I know on their birthdays just to tell them happy birthday. Don't laugh. This is very good because at least once a year you talk to him. Otherwise you don't talk to him or you don't talk to him. If you have your birthday, his or her birthday, you just call him once in a year at least to say hello, how are you, how is it going? And believe me, in life, social network is more important than everything. <laughs> because we are Mediterranean people. And as I said before, we mostly decide with our heart. And reference is very important. That's why keep your friends, call them at least once a year, have this social network. Again, the studying in Turkey is a good opportunity for it. It means you will have a social network abroad also. This is the second important thing. And the third important thing, which I strongly recommend to you at those years, know whatever you are doing well. Know it well. If you are studying, let's say, mechanical engineering, be a good mechanical engineer. Be good in it. Be good at least in one thing. Because when you go and when you apply for a job, the first question that, that is going to be asked to you when someone comes to me and when he says, I'm looking for a job, the first question I ask, I say, what do you know to do? What are you capable of? If I say, I can do everything, thank you very much to you. Have a nice day. Your question. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else like to ask questions? <laughs> Thank you for your uh, illuminating speech, uh, uh, Dr. Yasin. This is the, uh, the most illuminating speech I have heard in this year. Believe me. Even though you don't like it to talk about economics, but I just want to, talk, to ask a question about economics of Bosnia. We see here, you know, about uh, four million people or three million Bo uh, Bosnian people, and their economic situation is not very good currently. Un unemployment rate and other economic indicators, you know, you may know better than. Uh, you know, most of us. Uh, what do you see? You said that uh, in a few minutes ago, 10 to 15 years, this country's economy will be good, but uh, for the showing the uh, bright uh, days or years, what do you see? What are the problems and what can be done uh, in terms of these economic problems, especially from the size of the students? And they have expectations also, you, uh, we from the Turkey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was a very good question and very hard to answer. I don't want to look like someone who knows everything, okay? I will just try to tell what I perceive from the economic point of view. I may be totally wrong. I may be half wrong. I don't know. I will tell you my own perception, but I'm not saying that this is 100% correct. Every country, every company, every person has got strong points and weak points. Every entity 
has got competitive advantages and competitive disadvantages. So, in order to be successful as a person, as a company, as a country, we have to know what is our competitive advantage and we have to work on it. And we have to know what is our competitive disadvantage, we have to leave it aside. Okay? So when I look to Bosnia as a business person and when I look to it, I see some competitive advantage and I see some competitive disadvantage. Of course, as I tell you, this is my perception, I may be wrong. This is what I see. As a competitive advantage, I see first the location. The location of Bosnia is a very important competitive advantage. Why? When you look to the Balkans, when you look to the Turkey, almost 50 to 60 percent of the world production is at the east, and most of the world consumption is at the west of Bosnia. It means that this country can be a very important bridge between the world production and the world consumption. So this country is geographically very well situated. This country is not Argentina, it's not Chile. They are at the end of the world. End of the world. Okay? This country is situated right next in the middle of the world. This is a very, very, very big advantage, which should be worked on. The second important advantage is that the yacht in this country is very um, open, let me say. What I mean by openness is that they are in the middle of Europe. As we have just spoken before, before they have very easy reach to other countries, such as European countries, such as Turkey, or such as Middle Eastern countries, because of the religion, because of the contacts. And they also have very near to them people from other religions, from other languages. So a young person who is well educated in Bosnia can very easily be a multinational person. This is very important. This is the second big advantage. Okay. The third advantage is that Bosnia is a small country. This is an advantage. Now you will say, how come that being a small country is an advantage? <laughs> it depends from where you look. There are advantages of the big countries. There are advantages of the small countries. From the economic programs that you use. Let me give you the example of Singapore. Singapore is a very, very tiny, very, very small country, as you know. Because of the economic program that they apply, at this moment, GMP per capita in Singapore, which means the, what one person is earning per year, in average, it is $45,000. Because they are small. Because they applied very good program. We as Turkey, we cannot apply the same program because this is a program for a small country. It is much easier to manage a small country with a good economic program. You can very easily increase your earnings very, very fast. Russia cannot do it. In Russia, there are many other problems. Okay? So this is a very big advantage for you to soar, to go up very fast. These are the advantages of Bosnia. What are the disadvantages? The first disadvantage is a political disadvantage. I should say that because of the past, this is not anyone's fault, but because of the past, you have a very, very complex government. It creates a lot of bureaucracy. And that's why people, they don't want to come here, they don't want to invest here, they don't want to work here. Very openly, very honestly. We have to solve it. This is the first thing first to do. You have to create a good environment for politics, a good environment for economics. This is the first big disadvantage. The second disadvantage 
of course, what has been lived before. Now, in Bosnia, there are three different ethnicity, and unfortunately, among these three different ethnicity, there is no social peace. People, they don't trust each other, they don't like each other. And it's a very, very big problem for a country. Either you will separate or you will live together. But if you are going to live together, you have to learn how to live together. I'm talking to you very openly, OK? This is the second big disadvantage. Now, when we come to you, the second part of the question, what you have to do, or what if you do will be successful? What is good for you in Bosnia? What I would suggest to you is don't repeat what has been done before. Try to innovate. Try to do something new. Because in this country, you can do it. What I mean by don't try to imitate, but try to do something new. What I mean is that. Take, for example, the newborn companies in the United States, which became very, very successful. Mm -hmm. For example, a young person, of course, with the necessary infrastructure, has created something called Facebook, which has not been taught before. It was an innovation. Or they created something, let's say, like, Google, which has not been taught before. Or someone else came up and they said that, OK, let's make a telephone which can be carried in the hand. Okay? These are very small examples, of course, difficult to repeat. But you don't have to have a company which will make billions and billions of dollars like Facebook. Have an idea, a new idea, which can earn Hundred thousands of dollars, okay? But it should be new. It should be something which has not been taught before. If you repeat what everyone is doing, it's okay. It is fine. It is safe. But you will stay in a certain level. If you do something which is not done before, if it is new, it is risky because it is something new. But if you earn, we are a lot of things. That's why, as Bosnia, as Bosniaks, I believe that this country and the people in this country, they should do something new, something which has not been tried. Before. Otherwise, if you repeat what the others are doing, you will stay in the same place. I think I should stop here because maybe there will be a class who will start. No, no. Any other questions? Thanks. Okay. Ahmed. Our distinguished guests. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I just heard that you have to leave our university at 12 o'clock, so uh, it would be really good, nice to wrap up. Our distinguished gentleman here will uh, hand you over some awards, so please continue with our program. Yes, thank you for the inspiration. I would like to call President of SEDEF, Mr. Hassan Popol, to come to stand and award our guests, please.
this is a small gift from our side. For uh, it's a from, small gift from our side. Uh, just for explanation, here you see a tulip. As you know, the tulip is the symbol of Istanbul. Whenever you see a tulip somewhere, just know that it's the symbol of Istanbul. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, everyone, everyone thinks that tulips belong to Holland. No, tulip has gone to Holland from Istanbul 400 years. And the second, which is around it, you see a kind of painting. This painting in Turkish is called Ebru. In uh, English, I think it's called marble painting or water painting. Marble painting. This painting also is special to Turkey. Uh, that's why we wanted to give this uh, as a small token of appreciation. If you accept it, you'll make us very happy. Now, I would like to call uh, the member of Board of Trustees, Shekip Aldagic, to award our distinguished member of Parliament, please. İstanbul Milletvekilimiz Sayın Başbakanımızın selamını getirdi. Biz İstanbul Ticaret Odası'nın temsilcisi ve aynı zamanda Uluslararası Saray Boyu Üniversitesi'nin müddetteki heyet üyesi olarak bu selamı aldık, kabul ettik. Ama her ikimiz de iş adamı olduğumuz için bunu da iyi bir iş birliğinin başlangıcısı olarak kabul ediyoruz. Ve ümit ediyoruz İstanbul Milletvekili olmasından dolayı, iş adamı olmasından dolayı bu ve Saray Boyu'nda suyunu içmiş olmasından dolayı bundan sonra hem üniversiteye hem saray boyu bostere olan katkısı devam edecektir. Teşekkür ediyorum. Uh, well, shortly the, the let's say, say the foundation of faculty is accepted. Yeah. We got uh, greetings of Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdoğan. Now, I'd like to call. Again, uh, Mr. Shekip Bey, Shekip Abdagic, to give the speech of the opening day, Donald Tony Parata. En zor konuşma, çok iyi bir konuşmacıdan sonra konuşma yapmaktır. Dolayısıyla benim iyi bir konuşma yapmak gibi bir iddiam yok. Ee, sadece bugün başlayacak olan e, yedi faaliyetinizin açılışını e, anons etmek için böyle çağırdılar. Akkao Poryekum Bosanas Yabıhti Odanas no programda Otvori Novosans Kombiyatsku O isto vreme da kadar ne mesaj da svi ovde studenti koji studiraju u ovom universitetu moraju znat i naučit bosanski jezik. I moraju se vratit moraju se vratit svoju domovinu, ali da smo naučili bosanski jezik. Jeli, engelski jezik nije dovoljno da tople veze formiraju sa Bosnom. Svak zna engelski, ali vi trebate da naučite bosanski jezik, tako da imate još toplije veze sa Bosnom i sa ovim universitetom. Ja želim da ovaj novi program će doprinjeti nove vizije i nove studente našem universitetu. Imamo velike ciljeve za ovaj univerzitet da budi najjači univerzitet, ne samo univerzitet koji će davati diplome, nego univerzitet koji će biti najbolji što se tiče researcha, innovationa, istraživanja, koji će imati dobar glas na Balkanima u Evropi i očekivam da će studenti koji dobiju diplomu iz ovog univerziteta biti na jako dobrim položajima i u Bosni, i u Turskoj, i u četvrvom svijetu. Želim vam sve najbolje. Sada najbolje. 